The National Broadcasting Company presents Great Plays. Great Plays. seventh production this season in the series of great plays, the National Broadcasting Company presents Shakespeare's romantic comedy, The Tempest, with Sir Cedric Hardwick, Jessica Tandy, Louis Hector, and Irene Wicker. This charming and imaginative drama represents the bard of Avon at the full maturity of his art. It may have been the last play that he wrote. It is certainly his most highly original work. It stands alone in bold perfection among the great plays of all literature. Afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices that if I then had waked after long sleep will make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds me thought would open and show riches ready to drop upon me, that when I wait, I cry to dream again. So spoke the monster Caliban, for a time the only inhabitant on the uncharted remote island which is the scene of the tempest. Caliban the misshapen son of the witch Sycorax, inherited the marks of evil which disfigured his mother's mind. Sycorax died soon after she had borne this grotesque son of hers, and Caliban grew up alone on the island, eating what food he could get with his hands, speechless, for he knew no language, more like an animal than a man. One day, Caliban's solitary kingdom was invaded by a man from the outer world and a small girl that was his daughter. They were Prospero and Miranda, marooned here by the treachery of Prospero's enemies. before he was cast away on this island. But he was not the type of ruler to succeed in a corrupt world. Rather than pomp and glory, he preferred ease and quiet. Rather than warfare, he chose a scholar's life. Instead of being wary and suspicious, Prospero was a trusting man, quick to smile. Foolishly, he put his faith in his brother Antonio. Leagued with the king of Naples, Antonio usurped Prospero's ducal throne. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy father was the Duke of Milan and a prince of power. Oh, my father. What foul play had we that became from them? My brother and my uncle called Antonio. I pray thee, mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. The government I cast upon my brother and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit to presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom, and confer fair Milan with all the honors on my brother. Whereon a treacherous army levied, one midnight fated to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. Alack, for pity. They hurried us aboard a bark, 
bore us some leagues to sea where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rig, nor tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quitted. There they hoisted us to cry to the sea that roared it to us. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan Gonzalo did give us. Knowing I loved my books, he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. Would I might but ever see that man. Here in this island we arrived, and here have I thy schoolmaster made thee more profit than other princesses can, that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. Heaven thank you for it. Although Prospero's first task was the upbringing and education of his daughter Miranda, yet in his kindness he found time to, to teach that strange creation Caliban how to live more comfortably and above all, how to speak. One day, by chance, Prospero discovered an exquisite spirit of the supernatural world, a former servant of the dead witch Sycorax. This was the mischievous, delicate, frolicsome, childlike sprite, Ariel. Ariel, the ethereal personification of will and accomplishment with the lightning speed. Prospero, having released him from his prison in a cloven pine, Ariel swears lasting obedience. He fills the aisle with sweet music. He revels in his fun. On a summons from Prospero, he appears. Oh, hail, great master! Grace, sir, hail! I come to answer thy best pleasure. I come from the deep nook where once thou calledst me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed vermouthies. I come to answer thy best pleasure. Seek to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding, Tosk Ariel, and all his gaiety. With a dainty servant such as this, a featherless angel, as he has been called, Prospero developed great knowledge of magic from his rare books and attained great power. With Ariel's help, he could even control the elements. One day, Ariel brings Prospero startling news. The very two villains who had deposed him and callously set him and his daughter adrift, Antonio and the King of Naples, are at that moment traveling on the high seas. Prospero calls Ariel to him. Go, Ariel, he says, and create such a tempest upon the seas that my enemies will be shipwrecked and cast ashore here. Such a storm does Ariel create. The wind howls, the thunder roars, the waves roll like mountains. The ship begins to sink. The passengers cast themselves into the sea and struggle to make the shore of the island. Under Prospero's orders, is careful that each passenger and member of the crew reaches land safely, though on different parts of the island. Prospero, at last, has his enemies in his power. The king of Naples' son, Prince Ferdinand, is one of the castaways. If my daughter Miranda should marry Ferdinand, muses Prospero, she would one day become both Duchess of Milan and Queen of Naples, occupying the thrones of both my enemies. Might not this be a quaint beginning to revenge? Prospero directs Ariel to bring Prince Ferdinand to him, to lure him across the island with a song.
comes no more. And sure, it waits upon some god of the island. Sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father's wreck, this music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I followed it, or it hath drawn me rather. But tis gone. No, it begins again. song, Prince Ferdinand dares the place where Prospero and Miranda stand. And Miranda, who has never before seen any man except her father, looks at the young prince in wonder. What is? A spirit? Lord, how it looks about. Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form. But tis a spirit. No, wench, it eats and sleeps and has such sense as we have, sir. <sighs> This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck. Oh. He hath lost his fellows and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine. For nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Oh, most sure the goddess on whom these heirs attend. Vouchsafe my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is... Oh, you wonder, if you be made or no? No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens. At first sight they have changed eyes. They are both in either's powers. But this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. A word, good sir. I appear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? I charge thee, Ferdinand, that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it from me, the Lord on. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit had so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. Follow me, sir. Daughter, speak not you for him. He is a traitor. Come. I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. See water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots and husks wherein the acorn cradled. Follow. No, I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he is gentle and not fearful. Put thy sword up, traitor, who makes to show but dares not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, father. Hang him not on my garments. Sir, have pity, I be his surety. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. <sighs> Come on, sir, obey. I cast a magic spell upon thy limbs. Why? Thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I'm subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid. Come, sir, follow. Oh, Speak not for him, Miranda. Meanwhile, Ferdinand's father, Alonso, king of Naples, sits on the shore of a different part of the island with Prospero's brother Antonio and his own brother Sebastian, and Gonzalo, the kindly old nobleman who had helped Prospero and Miranda many years before. As Alonso sits bowed in grief, Gonzalo attempts to console him. I beseech you, sir, be merry. Oh. You have cause, so have we all of joy, for our escape is much beyond our loss. 
Our hint of woe is common. Every day some sailor's wife, the master of some merchant, and the merchant have just our theme of woe. But for the miracle, I mean our preservation. Pretty peace. He receives comfort like cold porridge. The visitor will not give him more, so... Look, he's winding up the watch of his wit. By and by it'll strike. Uh, sir. One, tell. Though this island seemed to be desert, uninhabitable and almost inaccessible, yet the air breathes upon us here most sweetly, and here is everything advantageous to life. If but one of his pockets could speak, would it not say he lies? <laughs> Methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first. Oh, what impossible matter will he make easy next? I think he'll carry this island home in his pocket and give it to his son for an apple. <laughs> <laughs> and sowing the kernels of it in the sea, bring forth more islands. Sir, we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when we were at Tunis at the marriage of your daughter, who is now queen. You cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense. Would I had never married my daughter there, or coming thence, my son is lost. Oh, thou mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Yes, sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs, his bold head above the contentious waves he kept. No, no, he's gone. It is foul weather in us all, good sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I a plantation of this isle, my lord? He'd sow it with nettle seed. Or docks, or mallows. <laughs> and were the king on what would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. In the commonwealth, I would by countries execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit, no name of magistrate. Letter should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service, none. Contract, succession, born, bound of land, tilth, vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil. No occupation, all men idle, all. And women too, but innocent and pure. No sovereignty. Yet he would be king on The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. <laughs> I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. Uh, and do you mark me, Pretty no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. part of the island, Caliban grumbles over his menial tasks demanded of him by Prospero in punishment for his attempted violation of Miranda. Enraged, the bestial creature curses. that the sun sucks up from bogs, fens, flats on Prospero Fall, and make him by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But they'll nor pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pitch me in the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of me way, unless he bid them. But for every trifle, they are set upon me. Sometimes like apes that moment shudder at me and after bite me. Sometime am I all wound round with adders who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Caliban's cursing is interrupted by the approach of Trinculo, King Alonso's jester, who, since the tempest, has been vainly searching the island for his lost shipmates. Oh, he has neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all and another storm brewing. Oh, I hear it sing in the wind. I know not where to hide my head. Low, now low. 
Here comes the spirit of Prospero's and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll fall flat. Perchance he will not mind me. What have we here? A man or a fish? Dead or alive? <gasps> a fish. He smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A strange fish. Legged like a man and fins like arms. Oh, Mommy Trough. This is no fish, but an islander that has lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Oh, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his cloak. There is no other shelter hereabout. Oh, misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. Trinculo huddles beneath Caliban's cloak. Caliban, believing him to be some punishing spirit of Prospero's, lies still as death, paralyzed with fear. When through the woods, a second man approaches. It is a scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. That was the voice of Stefano, the king's butler, one survivor of the wreck who cared very little about his predicament. For Stefano had floated to land on a barrel of wine, and having tugged it ashore, promptly started to sample its contents. Master the swabber, the and I, the and his mate. The mall make Marion and Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate. Do not torment me! Oh. Oh, what's the matter? Have we devils here? The spirit torments me! Oh. Oh. This is some monster of the isle with four legs who hath got, as I take it, an age. Oh. Where the devil should he learn our language? Uh, do not torment me, prithee. I'll bring me wood home faster. Oh. He, he's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste of my bottle. If he have never drunk wine afore, it'll go near to remove his fit. Thou dost me but little hurt. Oh. Thou wilt anon. I know it by thy trembling. Come on your ways. Open your mouth. Here is that which will give language to you, cat. <laughs> Open your mouth. This will shake your shaking, I can tell you. And that soundly. <laughs> Open your chaps again. <laughs> oh, that voice? It should be. Oh, but he's drowned and these are devils. Oh, defend me. <clears throat> Four legs and two voices? The most delicate monster. If all the wine in my bottle will recover him, I will help his ague. Come, drink. Amen. I'll pour some in thy other mouth. Stefano! <gasps> Doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is the devil and no monster. I will leave him. Stefano! If thou be a Stefano, touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Oh, be not afeard, thy good friend, Trinculo. If thou beest Trinculo, come forth. I, I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. Oh. If any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. Oh. 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 Ha, 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 ha. Thou art very Trinculo indeed. How camest thou to be in the siege of this moon calf? I, I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke. But art thou not drowned, Stefano? No. I hope now that thou art not drowned. No, no. And art thou living, Stefano? <laughs> oh, Stefano, Stefano! <laughs> Two Neapolitans escape. Uh, 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 prithee, uh, do not turn me about. My, my stomach is not constant. Ah, these be fine things, and if they be not sprites, <laughs> that's a brave god. And bear celestial liquor. <laughs> I'll kneel to him. Drink, you know? How didst thou escape? How camest thou hither? 
swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I, I escaped upon a butt of sack which the sailors heaved overboard. By this bottle, which I made of the bark of a tree with my own hands since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject. For the liquor is not earthly. <laughs> Drink, you Swear, then, how thou escapest. I swam ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Oh, oh Stefano. Hast any more of this? <laughs> the whole butt, man. My cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. <laughs> oh, no, Mooncalf. How dost thy egg you? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. <laughs> I was the man in the moon when time was. <laughs> I've seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. Come, swear to that on my bottle. I will furnish it anon with new contents. <laughs> swear. <laughs> By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have feared of him. <laughs> a very weak monster. The man in the moon. <laughs> a most poor, credulous monster. <laughs> I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island. <gasps> and I will kiss thy foot. <laughs> I pray thee be my god. By this light, a most perfidious and drunken monster. When God's asleep, you'll rob his bottle. I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself thy subject. Come, come then, down and swear. And I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks. But follow thee, thou wondrous man. A <laughs> most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. I prithee, let me bring thee where crabs grow, and I with, with my long nails will dig thee pit nuts, show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. <laughs> I'll bring thee to clustering filberts, and sometimes I will... I'll get the young scammers from the rocks. <laughs> Will thou go with me? Well, I, 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 I pray thee now, uh, lead the way without any more talk. <laughs> Trinculo, the king, and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here. Uh, here. Here, prepare my bottle. <laughs> Fellow Trinculo, we'll fill him by and by again. <laughs> Farewell, master. Farewell. Farewell. A howling monster, a drunken monster. <laughs> no more dams I'll make for fish. <laughs> nor fetching firing at requiring. Oh. Nor street trencher. <laughs> no wash this. Oh, no. Ben, Ben. Kakali Ben ah, ah, has a new master! Ah, ah, get a new man! Kakali ah, Ben! Freedom! Meanwhile, as Caliban deserts his labors, Ferdinand works diligently at his. For Prospero, to test the mettle of his love for Miranda, has set him to hard labor, scarcely befitting his rank. This, my mean task, would be as heavy to me as odious. But the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasures. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work. I forget... But these sweet thoughts do even refresh my labors. Alas, now pray you work not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up those logs that you're enjoined to pile. Pray set it down and rest you. My father is hard at study. Pray now rest yourself. He's safe for these three hours. Oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray give me that. I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you. And I should do it with much more ease, for my goodwill is to it and yours it is against. You look wearily. No, noble mistress. Tis fresh morning with me when you abide night. I do beseech you, 
chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father. I have broke your head to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration, worth what's dearest to the world. For several virtues have I liked several women. Never any with so full soul. But some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. But you, oh, you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. How features are abroad, I am skillless of. But by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of. Hear my soul speak. The very instant I saw you, did my heart fly to your service. Do you love me? Oh, heaven. Oh, earth. Bear witness to this sound. I, beyond all limit of what else in the world, do love, prize, honor you. I am a fool to weep at what I'm glad of. Wherefore weep you? At mine unworthiness. But dare not offer what I desire to give, and much less take what I shall die to want. But this is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself, the bigger bulk it shows. Hence, bashful cunning, and prompt me plain and holy innocent. I am your wife if you will marry me. If not, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but I'll be your servant whether you will or no. My mistress, dearest. And I, thus humble ever. My husband, then? I, with a heart as willing as bondage of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine. With my heart in it. On another part of the island... Sprawled out before a great cask of wine are those three bibulous companions, Stefano, Trinculo, and the quaint monster Caliban. <laughs> Tell not me. When the butt is out, we will drink water. Not a drop before. Servant monster, drink to me. Servant monster. <laughs> oh, the folly of this island. They say there's but five upon this isle. We are three of them. If the other two be brain like us, the same state totters. Drink, servant monster, when I bid thee. <laughs> my eyes are almost set in my head. Well, where should they be set else? He were a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail. Thou shalt be my lieutenant monster. <laughs> or my stand. <laughs> Mooncalf, speak once in thy life if thou beest a good Mooncalf. How dost thy honor? <laughs> let, let me let thy shoe. Huh? I'll not serve him. He is not valiant. No liars, most ignorant mm. monster. <laughs> oh, I'm in case of just a constable. Why, thou debauched mm. fish, thou? Was there ever a man a coward that has drunk so much sack as I today? Will thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half a fish and half a monster? Mm. Lo, how he mocks me. Will thou let him, my lord? Lord, quarter. <laughs> that a monster should be such a natural. No, no, again. Bite him to death, I prithee. <laughs> Drink you low, keep a good tongue in your head. If you prove a mutineer, the next three. <laughs> Poor monster's my subject, and he shall not suffer indignity. I thank me, noble lord. <laughs> Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit that I made to thee? Marry, will I? Hey, as I told thee... It is a custom with Prospero in the afternoon to sleep. There, thou mayest brain him, <laughs> having first seized his books, or with a log, batter his skull, <laughs> or punch him with a stake, or cut his weasand with thy knife. <laughs> Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen, <laughs> save our graces. And Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. <laughs> Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. As the conspirators plan their treachery, Ariel overhears them and brings back news of their plot to his master. Prospero, however, 
has more important business at the moment than dealing with the three drunkards. For he has decided to have his brother Antonio and Alonso brought before him so that he might confront them with their crimes against Miranda and himself. It is to this end that he dispatches Ariel on an important mission. By Lakin, I can go no further, sir. By your patience, I needs must rest me. Old Lord, I cannot blame thee. Sit down and rest. Even here I will put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer. My son is drowned who must we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. What harmony is this? My good friends, hark! Marvelous sweet music! As Alonzo and his companions watched, strange shapes, like neither man nor beast, materialize from the air and straightway begin to prepare a banquet. Foods, viands, steaming dishes, even a table itself appears before them. The preparations for a feast concluded, the weird shapes gently salute their awestruck spectators and with gestures invite them to dine. Alonzo is the first to step forward, and as he does so, the shapes suddenly vanish. Give us, kind keepers, heavens. What were these? A living drollery. Now I will believe that there are unicorns, that in Arabia there is one tree, the phoenix throne, one phoenix at this hour reigning there. They vanish strangely. As the spirits vanish, Ariel appears, not in his familiar boyish form, but in the horrible shape of a vulture. Like a bolt of lightning from the sky, he descends, hovering above the great banquet table, clapping his wings. Thought the billows spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe, pronounced the name of Prosper. It did base my trespass. Therefore, my son in the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than air plummet sounded, and with him there lie muddy. Before the cave, hand in hand, stand Ferdinand and Miranda, facing a now smiling Prospero. If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends. For I have given you here a thread of mine own life. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love. And thou hast strangely stood the test. Here before heaven I ratify this, my rich gift, my daughter Miranda. Oh, Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast her of, for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it, against an oracle. Then is my gift and thine own acquisition worthily purchased. Take my daughter. <sighs> Sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. And for your entertainment, I'll bestow upon your eyes some vanity of my art. True to his word, 
Prospero calls forth nymphs and goddesses to dance and sing and give a marriage blessing to the young lovers. Enraptured, Ferdinand and Miranda watch till the players in the scene fade slowly from sight like a spent vision. Our revels now are ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. Ah, sir, I am vexed. If you be pleased, retire into my cell and there repose. A turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mind. We, we wish you peace. peace. I had forgot that foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. Come with a thought, Ariel, come. My thought I cleave to. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. I, my commander. Say again, where didst thou leave these varlets? I told you, sir. In a filthy mantled pool beyond your cell. They are dancing up to the chin. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retain thou still. Aye, master. The finery in my house. Go bring it hither for bait to catch these thieves. I go, I go. I'll plague them all. Even to roaring. As a decoy to lure the three drunken conspirators away from their murderous purpose, Prospero and Ariel hang out a line and on it the richest garments they can find. Silken doublets, robes of state, these they put in plain sight, then quickly hide themselves as the would-be murderers approach. <laughs> Blind the mole may not hear a footfall. We now are near his cell. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than play the jack with us. Do you hear, monster? Uh, uh, if I should take a displeasure against you, look you... Oh, thou wert but a lost monster. Oh, good me lord, give me thy favor still. Speak softly. All's hushed as midnight yet. Aye, but to lose our bottles in the pool. Mm, there is not only disgrace and dishonor in that monster, but an infinite loss. Oh, prithee, <laughs> me king. Be quiet. Seest thou here? This is the mouth of prosperous cell. No noise. And and Do that. Good mischief, which may make this island thy known forever. And I, thy Caliban, for I, thy forgetter. Give me thy hand. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. Oh, King Stefano! Oh, hmm? Peter, oh, worthy Stefano! Look huh? what a wardrobe is on the line here! Get it alone, Ooh. thou fool! It is for trash. Oh, oh, monster, we know what belongs to a frippery. Uh, oh, uh, King Stafford. Put off that gown, St. Jerome, by this hand. I'll have that gown. I, Grace, shall have it. There drops it drown this fool. What do you mean to dope us on such luggage? Let's along and do the murder first. Are we, you quiet, monster. Mistress Lyde, is not this my jerking? Monster, yeah, yeah. come quickly now and away with the rest. I'll have none of it. We shall lose our time. And all be turned to barnacles. Uh, or to apes. Oh, monster, lay to your fingers. Help to bear this away where my hogshead of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to. I carry this. And this. I and this. As the three thieves are about to fall for their loot, Prospero calls his avenging spirits to him in the shape of dogs and hounds. Off oh, to them! <laughs> Hunted 
does my project gather to a head? My charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? On the sixth hour. At which time, my lord, you said our work should cease? I did say so when first I raised the tempest. How fares the king and his followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge all prisoners, sir. In the lime grove, which weather fends yourselves. They cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother and yours, abide all three distracted. And the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly him that you turn, sir, the good old Lord Gonzalo. His tears run down his beard like winter's drops from the eaves of reeds. Your charms so strongly work them that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir. Were I human? And mine shall. Though with their racks I am struck to the quick, the rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the soul due to my purpose of extent, not a frown further. Go release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break. Their sense I'll restore. And they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. I go. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes and groves, and ye that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune, and do fly him when he comes back, and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid, weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azure vault, set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, the strong base promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. But this rough magic I here abjure. And when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their sense that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Turns, leading Antonio, Alonso, Sebastian, and the old Lord Gonzalo. They come forward like men walking in their sleep, neither seeing nor hearing. Ariel leads them inside the magic circle which Prospero had drawn upon the ground. There stand, for ye are spell stopped. A solemn air and the best comforter to an unsettled fancy cure thy brain. <laughs> While the stately music begins slowly to restore their understanding, Prospero retires to the inner cave to dress himself in the robes of state which rightfully belong to him as Duke of Milan. And as Prospero dressed, the charm cast about Alonso and his companions dissolved. They look about and wonder at the strange cave. Suddenly, Prospero reappears before them. Behold, Sir King, the wrongy Duke of Milan, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body. And to thee and thy company I bid a hearty welcome. Whether thou beest Prospero or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late I have been, I not know. Thy dukedom I, I resign, and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living and be here? First, noble Gonzalo, let me embrace thine age whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends all. For you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth, I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, whom three hours since were wrecked upon this shore. Where I have lost, how sharp the point of this remembrance is. My dear son, 
Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss. And patience says it is past her cure. Alas, sir, the light loss is mine too. You, the light loss? As great to me as late. For I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh, heaven, that they were both living in Naples, the king and queen there. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. But welcome, Alonzo. This sells my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects, none abroad. Pray you look in. Thus Prospero directs their attention to the entrance of his cell. Speechless with amazement, they behold there Ferdinand and Miranda playing chess. If this prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. Most high miracle. Father. My son. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise and say how thou camest here. Oh, wonder. How many goodly creatures are there here. How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. It is new to thee. What is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Your elst acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal. But by immortal providence, she's mine. She is the daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I have heard renown but never saw before, of whom I have received a second life and second father this lady makes him to me. I am hers. But, oh, how oddly will it sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. There, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances with heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept or should have spoke ere this. Look down, you gods. And on this couple drop a blessed crown. I say, Amen, Gonzalo. Sir, all this service have I done since I went? Yes, Ariel, my tricksy spirit. Was it well done? Bravely, my diligence, and thou shalt be free anon. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night, which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as I not doubt shall make it go quick away. The story of my life and the particular ant accidents gone by since I came to this isle. And in the morn, I'll bring you to your ship and so to Naples, where I have hoped to see the nuptial of these, our dear beloved, solemnized. I'll deliver all and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales. My aerial chick, that is thy charge. Then to the elements, be free, and fare thou well. the past hour, you have heard Shakespeare's The Tempest, as adapted for the air by Charles Newton, with the following cast. Sir Cedric Hardwick, Prospero, Jessica Tandy, Miranda, Irene Wicker, Ariel, Louis Hector, Caliban, William Podmore, Stefano, Horace Bram, Trinculo, John Abbott, Alonzo, John Moore, Antonio, Carlton Young, Ferdinand, J.P. Wilson, Gonzalo, William Rainey, Narrator. Original music composed by Gail Kubik. The orchestra was directed by Joseph Honte.
Shakespeare wrote his masterpieces of comedy and tragedy was a highly productive period of the drama. Besides Shakespeare, it produced such poet playwrights as Marlowe, Ben Jonson, Beaumont, Fletcher, and many others whose names are immortal. And it was during this age also that a handful of the most brilliant of them wrote a series of plays which became later known as the Revenge Tragedies. Next Sunday at this time, the Great Plays series will present an original script which tells the story of the Revenge Tragedies. Great Plays Drama Guide by Blevins Davis, who arranged for the series, is available to our radio audience through the Columbia University Press at the cost of 25 cents. Send coin or money orders to Great Plays National Broadcasting Company, New York City. The Great Plays Drama Guide contains a summary of the plot, sketch of the author's life, and pertinent facts about each of the 30 plays in this series. Consult your local library for reading material on the remaining Great Plays of the series. This is a special announcement. Every service of your Red Cross is vital in national defense. Your membership is Mercy's Badge of Honor. Join the Red Cross and tell your friends to join. has been presented as a public service for the National Broadcasting Company and the independent radio stations associated with the NBC networks. It came to you from the RCA building, Radio City, New York.